Hello everyone, I'm Said Mandegar. Welcome back to yet another tutorial. So great to have you here. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through creating landscape topology inside 3ds Max and prepare it for making materials in V-Ray or any other real-time rendering engines like D5 Render. Now, let's dive in. Here you can see the current topology I previously created for this scene. I'm going to use it as a base for my new one. Additionally, I will optimize the new topology so that you can easily follow along with your own projects. Let's dive in. I will start by creating a plane and adjust its position, size and the number of segments. Keep in mind that having more segments adds details can also make your topology heavier, potentially causing RAM issues or slowing down your workflow. Next, I will add an editable poly modifier on top of my plane layer and switch it to polygon mode. Then, I will enable soft selection and adjust the brush value, size and strength. The color indicates selection intensity, with red areas being the most affected and blue areas the least. Lower values affect less, resulting in smoother bumps. Now I will select the polygon and start shifting them up using the move tool. From the side view, I can see how much I'm rising them compared to my building. Once the raised area looks flat, I will add another editable poly and repeat the process to create more ups and downs. To save time and RAM space, you can start painting with lower brush values and gradually increase them while applying random strokes on the plane object. Since the camera focuses on our subject, which is a villa in this case, we don't need to add details to the outer side of topology. Instead, we will add more details to the inner side. This will help create nice highlights and shadows on grasslands, with trees placed on a different levels. After a few minutes of playing with soft selection, I finally created something that I think will look good for scattering. These are the hills where I will later add my trees during the scattering process inside D5 Render. Once completed, I will add a retopology modifier on top of all editable poly modifiers to optimize my model. Let's move on to the next part. Alright, in this part, I'm going to work on the smaller hill where the villa is located. The process remains the same, but the challenges are different. Let me show you. I will start by creating a plane object again and adjusting its size, position and segments. Once it's set up, I will add an editable poly modifier on top of that object, switch to soft selection by choosing a polygon mode and start painting on it. In front of the villa, I need to lower the faces so that the lower floor will be visible.
Once that's done, I will smooth out the ramp. Now it's time to enhance the area around the villa. Since there is a water nearby, I will shape the land to look more natural with a gentle slope leading into the water. The parts that will be underwater are unnecessary, so I can delete them or select them from a side view. Let me shift them up to create a bigger gap between the hills. Now I will create an object for water using a plain object again. If you're rendering your scene with V-Ray or Corona, simply add a noise modifier and adjust the height. But for animations, a simple plane with a water material works fine. I'll position them to showcase the watershed. Due to the negative shift of polygons, we can see the water plane. I will add an editable poly modifier and delete those faces. That's it, as simple as that.
Here you can see the old version of topology with 20,000 polygons and the new optimized topology with 50% fever polygons. That was a good optimization. Although I can optimize further, but 10,000 is fine for me. Alright, when everything is done, I will add a UVW map modifier to ensure that if I load it into another rendering engine like D5 Render, the materials look fine. In the next part of this video, I will load this scene into D5 Render and show you how to scatter this landscape using the updated version of D5 Render. If you want to learn more about it, click on the link I put up in here or find the link in the description tab. They've added a new amazing features for scattering and made it super easy and flexible. I recommend you watch that video. That's it for me guys, hope you enjoyed it. Please hit that like button if it was helpful and subscribe to my channel and click on that notification bell to be informed about the next videos. See you soon, have fun!